Okay, get your set up, your table set up. You've got your water, um, your paintbrush, uh, two waters, one for dirty, one for clean. Maybe your glass of tea if you need one or something nice to drink, some water. And, and then you prime your paints with just putting a little drop of uh, paint in each well. I wanted to show you what we did in our Monday class. We did a um, flamingo and just thought if you wanted to do something fun, you could do uh, a flower crown on your flamingo. Um, this was the Monday class that the, the people sent me their emails and I gave them the invite. It's not too late. Send your email to me and I will send you an invite on Friday and give you the information for the Zoom class on Mondays. Um, of course, this one is Tuesday and Thursday, three o'clock live. We're going to do an apple. Um, I've got my paints primed. The colors we need, I put down here on the bottom. You can see I have like a yellow green and I have a, um, a yellow green. Actually, I did a little darker green, like a hunter green. And then I wanted it a little more like sap. So the way I did it was um, take the hunter green and then added some of the, um, what do you call it? The um, raw umber, the, no, 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 sorry, sorry. The yellow ochre, yellow ochre. If you, you should have yellow ochre. It's, it's a yellow, but it's got a little more like a brown to it. So I added that into the green and I think that's a really pretty color. And then um, we took the alizarin crimson, Aliz, the name Liz. I always called it incorrectly. So I know, and I want you all to know that I know it's alizarin. And I'm going to add a little bit of the cadmium red to that to make it just a little bit cohesive, just to have it like a soft scarlet red. And then, of course, you're going to want a little bit of sienna. That'll be our final at the end. We'll do a little bit of sienna. So as far as the apple goes and as far as drawing, um, I did pull some pictures up and I'm going to bring them up right now. Um, here we go. So I wanted you to see this big green apple and um, I can lower that a little bit. I just wanted you to notice the the roundness of it. Um, some apples tend, uh, they're a little bit like wedgy, maybe a little wedge. This one tends, is looks like it's kind of a perfect round, but it's kind of a wedge. And here is, it's round. We can put a little edge on it to make it yours, a personal one. Um, and the leaf is actually coming right out of that. I'm not sure that's real. I don't know if they just did that for, hi, Laura Lane, how are you? I'm, we're painting an apple for teacher appreciation. Um, any case, this, this leaf, I think they just put in there. So uh, I just wanted to notice and then notice the dark, notice the light spot and notice the um, dark on the bottom. And then you have a little shading underneath. Uh, I'd like to open up another apple to look at. Let me get that one open. Um, and this one is a little more choppy. It's a little more uh, wedged. So um, i lower that again. And you can see there's like a, a sharp edge here and here. And it's got a nice angle here. So it's not a perfectly round. Apples, I don't think, are perfectly round. Some of the teeny ones might be. But um, it has a nice edge here and up here. I love this shadow there. The, excuse me, the highlight. I love how that is just really nice. People have a hard time with this edge, the dip part. And um, what I just want to point out right now before we start is um, this is a little highlight here. And then it's a dark, kind of a dark half circle in here. It's an edge. It's a sharp edge right there. And that's a little highlight, but it's dark behind it. And that's how we're going to get that uh, pit in there. But don't put it in yet. Don't start with apple. And then we'll put that in after. Um, I did think it was kind of fun to, oh, this one I thought was kind of fun. I, we're not going to paint this, but I'd love for you to uh, feel brave after you've done one apple with us. I'd like you to just experiment and maybe try. Here's, here's that wedge of an apple. See how, see how the line comes down 
and then it's really nice clean not it's not going to be white it's going to have a little bit of a green tinge to it and then here's going to be a little more green where the seed is but that's a beautiful leaf and look at that line in the leaf remind me when we get to the leaf i think i definitely will scrape in the leaf with an exacto knife if you don't have an exacto knife don't worry you can use a um, paper clip no no worries about that notice this hole here notice how it goes dark it's dark kind of behind then there's a little flat line and it's a little bit highlighted so when we get to that that'll be an important thing to notice um and the other one i just thought this was a fun picture i should have probably started it out with that if <laughs> so you can see look at all these apples and look at all the color and the different shapes and how fun that is so if you really wanted to experiment you could do a whole page and just do the whole page with the little circles. You would need the highlights and the apples. And then in here, you would just do the shape that's kind of dark. And then, of course, there's a couple uh, pits showing where the stem comes out. So that might be kind of fun. Um, I really appreciate what you've been doing um, when you're painting with me. And you have, I think this isn't more interesting, but when we get to the... Eh, I'm going to pull that one up. I like this one. I think we're going to use this one as our uh, shape to go with. But when you get to, um, when you get, when we get to the top, when we want to add a leaf, I'll pull up that other picture with the leaf. So here we go. Too bad I can't push that over a little bit. All right. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is just lightly draw. We talked about a little bit. I'm going to make it, um, and I'm looking at my phone because I think that's what you see is my phone. Again, it's uh, technology issues, but here we go. I'm going to just put that edge in, just sketching it really lightly. Remember, if we go too hard on our paper, it will leave a mar, and we don't want that. It's not a perfect round. I'd like to have some dimension in here. Um, if it's a little off, that's good. That's why I picked the apple. I don't want you to worry and get hung up on drawing. This just kind of indicating putting that in a little bit here just putting that in um, I just want you to have some fun with this and enjoy the painting process I'll take a little bit of that eraser and erase some of this out a little so that when I'm painting it you won't get stuck on looking at the the pen mark but that just gave me a little bit of outline where it's gonna be um, and the first layer so this is a green apple and it the green green is it seems like a little bit cooler than a warm so i'm going to use this i didn't even put it down here but i'm going to use the lemon yellow lemon yellow is a little cooler than the cadmium yellow so i'm just going to do just a nice little wash with the lemon yellow just to give it a little glow underneath and when i'm painting i'm going to try to think about here's going to be maybe the highlight here, and then there's a nice splash of a highlight here. So I'm gonna not paint that yellow. I'm gonna leave that light. I'm gonna leave that open. Um, if you have frisk, that's where you would use your frisk or your drawing gum. We're not using that because I really want you to just experiment and play with the watercolor. Just have some fun, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, a lot of times people haven't even done watercolor before, so um, I'm hoping you'll just experiment and play with me and just have some fun with it. Um, okay, so I had it where I could bring the camera down, and I think I will, but I put the camera right where I have the, the um, TV monitor. So let's see if that comes a little closer for you. Let's see frustrating there are you guys still there oh my gosh you had to deal with all that oh my gosh please don't quit on me I'm sorry I'm not a quitter I really can't I can't quit I want this to work I have so much fun I look forward to it. oh darn if one of you needs to come over and help me <laughs> ah. um okay the colors um were medium green and then I took the uh, like a hunter green or the darker green and added a yellow ochre. And then I used the alizarin crimson and a little bit of the cadmium red in there to mix. And then the burnt sienna. So um, if you guys could just give me a thumbs up so I know that you're still here and you see this. If I'm still live, that would be great. If I'm not live, no problem. You can add comments after 
Um, I really am thankful for those of you that are sending pictures, putting pictures on Art Yourself Studio, is you have to go to the Art Yourself Studio page. If you're unable to post, you may have to like it or follow it so that you can post your pictures for me. Um, I love the Zoom on Monday because then I could see you all. We had a really good time. I had a meeting, so I had to like hang up pretty quickly, so I hated that, but that was a really fun, uh, we did the flamingo. And I loved what you what you guys did with your flamingos. Um, okay, so we're kind of letting gonna let that dry a little bit. Let the apple dry. As you notice, it's a little bit darker down here on the bottom. Grab that. Um, I like to go start with the dark, the light, and then the next layer is the next lightest, and um, just put that a nice thin coat over. It's better if you let it dry. So this is kind of a transparency technique. It's better if you let it dry. Oops, that's a lot of paint. I got a lot of paint on there. Um, this is a dry, wet paint on a dry paper. I'm not, uh, the wet on wet is a cool technique and I'll show you that in a minute. But um, this one I'm using where my paint is wet and my brush is wet, but the paper is, um, it does have a little shimmer to it because we already did the layer of yellow on there, but um, it's considered wet on dry. Um, you, you definitely can do wet on wet. It's very fun. When I'm teaching, I like to teach this, this wet on um, dry because I feel like you get a little more control. And I think uh, people with watercolor, they give up because th there's a lack of control. So I start teaching this way just to show you how you can control it. But then for example, over here, if we were to do another one, a wet on dry, sorry, wet on wet, um, and, and do wet label your paper, go ahead and label it wet on wet. Um, today is May 12th and this is the 12th lesson. I hope you guys have all done, done all the lessons with me. This is our 12th one. I'm getting the paper wet. I'm gonna just wet that apple shape. And then this is fun and this is beautiful. And this is why people like watercolor. It has a little shine to it. It's not too soupy wet. Again, the paper is a little bumpy because it is a mixed meat paper to start out with. So that's wet on wet. Um, but let me show you what happens when you paint wet on wet. It's so, so fun. You just, just let it move. You let it bleed into it kind of blooms and blossoms. So this is a, a little more painterly apple. This one will be a little more painterly than what we're doing here. Here we are directly painting it. This one I'm letting the colors do all the work. I'm gonna let that because um, we're just gonna do the next color. I'm gonna lay the next color a little darker, need some dark down here. It, the idea is to just let it bleed and blend, but you're gonna wanna leave your highlight spots, your spots that are highlighted. Um, and then we just take the little burnt color down here. So this is like a quick little, um, uh, you know, just a little study on the wet on wet. That one I'm going to let dry and I'm going to come back over to here since this is dried a little bit. We're going to go the next color. We're going to take this. Um, we did the medium green. Now we're going to take that. I'm going to, I like it if you mix it on your palette. Sometimes I use the technique where you mix on your paper, but right now we're just gonna mix this on your palette. You're gonna mix that yellow ochre and the hunter green. Lay it in where places where we want it to be a little darker. I'm gonna just lay it in lightly. See, it's got that little, that yellow ochre to it and lay it in here. I would like this to be a little more wedgy. I like it just to be, I know the picture's more round, but I think to, it'll make it a little interesting if it's a little straighter edge there. Um, this could use a little deeper. I mean, the best thing is, is to look at your picture, look at the apple in the picture, and then look down at your painting, kind of look back and forth, back and forth. But sometimes if I am too close to my painting and I'm looking at it too too close, then um, I get lost. So what I've, I've noticed has been kind of fun with these classes is when I look up, I can see it in the uh, on the screen, kind of like what you'll be doing is you'll be looking on the screen and you'll be looking down at your paper. 
Um, and don't worry, I'm going slow, so you won't miss something, and you can probably watch it again if you'd like. I love that you guys are here. Thank you. There seems to be some black in my gray when we were doing the, um, was it the bingo? So that color, I'm going to have to clean that out. I must have gotten a little black in it when it, it might have, a piece might have fallen in there. Um, it's getting kind of wet, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. This green is, and I don't think I put it on our color chart, I dipped over in here into this emerald green. And the emerald green is has a lot of blue in it. But I think it's kind of pretty to add some texture and detail. It's not the green that's in the picture so you don't don't put it on if you don't want to stick with what you what you're used to come around to this side a little bit with the dark our sunlight our sun source is coming from there that's coming this way so this side should be a little lighter than than the other side um yeah there we go this is just a fun little apple um i'm not going to leave that I love this little, uh, I like that little light spot over there, so I really want to leave it. That's the yellow showing through. Uh, I'm going to leave that and then come back over here. I'm going to leave the light space up here. And I'm going to do just a little wash over the white. I know it's pretty white in the picture, but I think it is distracting. If you leave a, a white patch on your painting, it's just distracting. So just do a little light cover on there. Um, uh, I'll, I'll uh, let you know I started out with a lemon yellow and then I did a me the medium green which is kind of a yellow green and then I took the hunter green and I added a little bit of yellow ochre to make a, a sappy green but um, as I was painting I decided I didn't want too much sap green that's kind of an undercoat so now I see these straight lines I'm going to just soften it up a little bit and remember when at the beginning when we pointed out that apple, we pointed out this part right here. It dips in, so the dark is behind. So I'm going to grab some of that. The probably mm, that might be a little too dark. Let's see. Let's grab some of this yellow ochre and hunter green. And I might take just take a little dab of this emerald green in there and then drop it in. I know it's wet behind it, so I'm not going to go right up into the wet. It might bleed out a little, which is also very cool. Isn't that pretty? That's kind of like the, um, the blooming part of what most people like when they're doing their um, apples. Let me show you this one. I'm going to bloom that part. The thing is, is it's not a perfect circle like this. It's definitely a dip. And the, and the color is back here behind. Then you have a little light here in front. And then you have a little bit of dark in front of that. So I'm talking about that little circle, this little circle. See how that stayed dark and then it has a light in front of it. Here it's blended in a little bit. And that's your tissue. If you use a tissue, you, if, you've been coming, if you've been following me, you'll know. If you use a tissue, you're going to use a Kleenex. Because the, um, look how I can pick up that color. I can pick that up and it kind of gives me another chance to uh, paint over it a little bit. And then you got to let it dry some. Um, you use the, if you use your paper towel, it will leave a mark on yours. And sometimes you want that mark. But for this purpose, we're just going to, we just, I just wanted to lift it up a little to make that dark stand out. As it dries, I'm going to add a little more. This is really getting dark. That's okay. I'm going to add just a dot to even go darker in the very, very center. See how that light line in front of the other behind it makes it dark? Um, I'm going to do oh, because to me it looks a little rough. I think my paper's buckling too. But we're not going to get stuck on this. It's, it's, I promise you when it dries and you walk away and then you come back, you'll look at it and you'll, you'll really appreciate how it looks. Uh, you can take some of that green and the darker green, maybe, and a little bit of uh, blue. I'm using just a dab of blue, mixing it a little bit to kind of put a little shadow in there. And I want to add the leaf, but I'm waiting waiting until it dries. Bleed in. And you try to get rid of some of your edges just by doing a little scrubbing. A little scrubbing. Hi, Brandon. I certainly hope you're painting with us. Please post if you are. I love it become a watercolorist we love it i'm going to demo over here the leaf 
it was kind of this shape and this simple 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 little leaf just put it in take your exacto knife or paper clip and draw the lines and what happens is the paint will fall in the lines it's kind of nice then it just lines it out for you and this there we go kind of simple simple leaf maybe pick up some color on the on the part that would be a little lighter just to give it a little dimension yeah that's a simple leaf here we go let's spread this out a little bit I mean okay sometimes when I'm sitting here I'm like okay this is what it must have felt like for Bob Ross kind of talking to himself as he's painting that's why I love the Monday class please send me your email I will send you an invite I send it out on Friday for the um, Monday class. It's so much better because I can see you. Last Monday was so far. Darker line here in the front of that light highlight. Emily, I think this is where you might, with your apples, you might have, you might find that'll give you that separation. Anyway, so Bob, but the thing is, even with Bob Ross, he had his camera crew he could talk to. <laughs> and, and Brandon, you might, you, I know you know him, but I'm laughing because I'm just saying you're you're very, very young. If you don't know him, that's fine. I'm sure you know him because everybody talks about him. But we used to watch him. We literally would watch him paint. I was a little girl. I would just sit and watch. Everybody else was like sleeping. I'd get up early and I'd go down and turn the TV and there was Bob Ross. And I would just watch him paint. I always wanted to paint. Yep. I always thought that would be so cool. My mom, she was a painter as well. She always had some painting project going on in the basement. Okay, um, to me, when I'm looking at the picture, this is a little dark right in here. Uh, but it because this paper is mixed media and not watercolor paper, well, even watercolor paper, you, you really have to be uh, careful. You don't want to go over and over and over it. And there, go, there goes, again, that black streak that's on my paint is really, I've got to clean that out. But uh, I can use that. I might push it down here just to give me a little bit of a, a more of a, a shadow. So I'm not sure how, how are we doing on time. Um, I think we're just about to the 30 minute mark. This one is mostly dry. So it might be kind of fun. This is the painterly one. It might be kind of fun if you wanted to just add a little bit of a, an outline just to give it some, some form. But again, you, you want it artsy. And we can add with the sienna, <clears throat> we can add that little stem. The stem's coming out this way, and it's gonna have a flat top, and that leaf is coming out from that stem. So maybe, just to get a little more detail in here, you might just put a couple little streaks. That'll show that movement down in there. And what I would like to do, it looks pretty good on the on the camera, but when I'm looking at it in person, I'd like to take a little bit of a dark blue and just put it right on top of that. Just blend it in with that. That just makes it a little bit darker. Uh, I see it's a little misshapen, which is <clears throat> what I wanted. I was hoping you guys do yours a little misshapen. Um, try to think of something, you know, unique about how you're going to do your apple. Maybe you do a basket with apples. Maybe you cut it open and have a wedge. Maybe you put peanut butter on it. I, I see that little line here is just to kind of indicate that it's coming around. I might get that wet again. But I really wanted this to be artsy. I don't want to overwork it. This one's pretty overworked, but it's still an apple. So I love to see your apples every Tuesday and Thursday, three o'clock. Join me every week. I'm going to try something new so that you're not looking at my camera on my phone. I had the program growing of course, knowing that when you want it to be live, it, it just doesn't. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little apple project. Now, this is a little too liney for me, so I'm going to pull that out a little. It's still damp, so I can take the tip and just pull it down. I, didn't, I don't want you to see a line there. Just kind of blend it in, lightly blend it in. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, I think I was saying. And then um, um, Monday, if you'd like the invite, send me your email. I will send you the Zoom invite. That was so nice. We got to talk, and we were able to see everybody's paintings. Um, I found, too, if you go to Art Yourself Studio, 
and you might have to friend it, friend me or follow it or um, I don't think you have to like and follow. I think you definitely have to follow. If you follow, you can put in your uh, pictures so that we can see them. Also, if you follow, if you'll see these, you'll get a little notice to say, oh, that Art Yourself is going live and you'll see when I'm doing the next one. And I promise you, probably by the time we're back off of quarantine, I will have it all figured out, the technology. Um, figured out where you guys, I really want you to <laughs> see it on my screen with me. Um, so there we go. That's the apple. How did you guys like it? I hope you can show me, show me yours. Um, and yeah, Emily, I please, I'd love to see how you did your stems. And I, and I do hope, I do believe you. I hope, I do hope this helped you a little bit. That stem kind of has a little chunk at the end, usually, uh, I'm pulling this one in. I make it kind of big. Um, also, just to pull in, this is funny because there's a time when you're supposed to stop, but it's been so fun, and I keep I keep playing. So I'm gonna just add a little more dark there in front, uh, so that it's. The key is, you guys. The key is, is that it's this shape. It's kind of a V shape. You don't. You really don't want to make it round. It's not round. It's if you do that V shape, that indicates. That it's coming around. All right. Apple's funny looking, but hey, I like it. It's mine. I want to see yours. Please post. Go to Art Yourself Studio. Follow the page. You can then upload the picture. Easy peasy. Put your name on it so I can see it. I hope you had fun today. And we're going to paint again Thursday at um, 3 o'clock. I'll see you then. Bye.